It is my honor to introduce on stage Ms. Nurul Iza Anwar. She heads or co-heads the Secretariat for the Advisory Committee to the Finance Minister in Malaysia. Ms. Anwar, may I welcome you on stage, please? Can we have a round of applause? Let's, let's keep it high energy. Uh, I know conferences can flag, but uh, we're going to ensure that doesn't happen because we're talking about something far too important today. Welcome to the stage, Ms. Anwar. Thank you very much, Stari Baraka. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum madani. Very good morning to everyone. Um, right Honorable Adam Clark, our distinguished guests, everybody from all over the world, thank you for being here. It's a privilege to welcome everyone for the launch of the Global HPV Consortium. It's an exciting, hopeful, and powerful initiative to prevent HPV and, inshallah, eliminate cervical cancer. I was a former member of parliament and current policymaker right now and um, I feel that I've actually directly witnessed the suffering caused by cervical cancer, a cancer that is preventable through vaccination and screening, a cancer that no woman, mother, sister, daughter should have to face. Now, in 2019, I was very fortunate because I had the chance to work closely with Prof Wu Yin Ling, who's here with us, founder of Malaysia's very own program, Rose in Malaysia, on the adoption of HPV DNA self-sampling for cervical screening as a powerful tool to increase screening uptake. I'll never forget, thanks to Dr Wu, the heartbreaking story of a, a patient of hers who we visited, myself and my team, in PPUM, um, Pusat Perubatan University Mulaya. Um, it's a teaching hospital, it's very dear to me, not just as a member of parliament, but all six of us, we were born there. And she was a, um, from a remote village in Puncak, Borneo, Malaysia. She was diagnosed with advanced cervical cancer and was bleeding for many months, but was too embarrassed to seek help. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the cost and time needed to travel to her local district hospital was about three hours away, and it weighed heavily on her in terms of the financial costs. So she quickly, you know, she, she, you know, she just quietly hid her pain she was bleeding, she was fatigued, but she walked hours each day with a small child on her back to, uh, to tap rubber. She was, she was a rubber tapper uh, to provide for her family. And by the time she was diagnosed, her cancer was so advanced, and despite the best efforts of her medical team, I believe her son was also working in PPUM, um, she passed away a few months after our visit. You know, she, was, she was very much in high spirits, which brings me back to Barca's message of hope. Um, and the encounter left a profound effect on me and my team. It really strengthened our resolve to do all we can to contribute towards cervical cancer elimination in Malaysia and globally. And even though I'm no longer wearing the cap of a member of parliament, I'm so proud to be part of the global initiative today. To that end, I'm very proud also that in terms of Malaysia's achievement in HPV vaccine rollout amongst 12 to 15 year olds, year old girls, yeah? between 2010 to 2020, we reached 90% and it's been due to the significant commitment of the Ministry of Health and government agencies in effective vaccine deployment. The program had slowed down, as we know, during the pandemic, and we're looking forward to renewed efforts through the strong commitment of the government and the stakeholders to restart this program and ensuring effective catch-up vaccinations for those girls who missed out on HPV vaccination during the pandemic. As a mother, I know how important it is to protect our children. I just met a fellow member, I mean, former member, of, current member of parliament, I'm the former one, YB Sim. He's sort of waiting for his, his son um, and his daughter to be vaccinated. But for me, I'm very lucky, very fortunate because my daughter, Safia, and Harith, my son, both have been vaccinated. I'm waiting for you, Joe, who's seven this year. And I will continue to do what I can as a policymaker to ensure that all children in Malaysia are protected from preventable HPV-related cancers. I'm very proud of the whole society approach. 
What are we doing today in terms of eliminating, uh, eliminating cervical cancer? Will require support of all stakeholders, government, academic, policy experts, and the non-governmental organizations. Now we have to come together to ensure an effective transition to HPV DNA self-sampling for cervical screening. Much has been achieved, the hard work of the ministries, health, women, family and community development, and NGOs such as Program Rose. But these efforts now have to be scaled up, accelerated if we are to be on track to effectively implement our action plan towards the elimination of cervical cancer in Malaysia 2021 to 2030. I'm deeply encouraged by Dr. Zaliha Mustafa, who is our Minister of Health. She recently, um, again, made the clarion call, healthcare is as, as an investment, not a cost. Prof. Adiba just mentioned it earlier this morning. And this is the paradigm through which we must see HPV vaccination and self-sampling for cervical screening. Just one vaccination, ladies and gentlemen, just one at the age of 12 to 15 years old and two high-precision HPV DNA tests delivered through self-sampling do-it-yourself kits by Bypass Mia in a woman's lifetime can spare her the unnecessary pain and suffering of cervical cancer. So the cost is about 250 US dollars, since we're speaking globally. It's about 1,200 ringgit Malaysian at today's exchange rate. And I believe that 1,200 ringgit is worth investing to save a woman's life from cervical cancer. And I believe we also must urge responsible industry, pharma, to show real commitment in working together with governments in low and middle income countries, particularly the global south, where over 80% of cervical cancer deaths arise in order to ensure equitable access for both HPV vaccination and screening. I think much more needs to be done to save every child in Southeast Asia, Asia and Africa to make sure they have access to the vaccination and high precision HPV DNA testing. I hope the discussions in the next two days will be truly impactful and will enable collective mapping amongst policymakers government reps, academic experts, clinicians, patient advocates, civil society, responsible industry and pharma to ensure that no child and no woman is left behind and that we're able to stand together in solidarity as we move towards a cervical cancer-free future, inshallah. Thank you very much and let's do our best. Wassalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Stay on stage for, for half a second. You, you mentioned vaccinating your son, and I was yes. uh, along with your daughter, and I was yes. struck by that. Evidence based. Evidence based. Uh, that <laughs> doesn't get told enough that this isn't just about vaccinating girls, it's also about vaccinating boys. Just a quick thought on that before we let you go. Yeah, I mean, I think because the issue is, of course, cost. You know, you, and, and usually I think we forget that boys can be carriers. So if you look at the screening that takes place, um, all the women, you know, who are positive with HPV, and sometimes the cause are going to be their partners. So I think this investment is something we have to look at, and that's why I mentioned responsible pharma industry, because cost could be pro prohibitive to governments making this decision, because always a zero sum as you look at the after effects or the aftermath of the pandemic. Thank you, Ms. Anwar. The idea, of course, this morning, thank you. Uh, let's have, hear it from Ms. Anwar. Um, the idea this morning, of course, is to amplify the messaging, is to get everybody in the world to talk about it. There will, of course, uh, be questions about costs, and I'm sure countries, governments will have their own negotiations, their bilateral negotiations with different manufacturers, pharmaceutical companies. But I think what's really important to hold on to today, as I said, is how do we get this message out that women do not have to die from at least this particular kind of cancer.